Um, I'm going to bring us all back to the moon if, <laughs> one more time to close this out. Uh, I started at the beginning with the phrase, if we can land a man on the moon, why can't we dot, dot, dot. Of course, that phrase is a cliche. It's been ingrained in our culture for more than 50 years. Uh, and it's, it's, it's come to mean anything is possible. It's been used by coaches, teachers, columnists, politicians, volunteer fundraisers, as, as a way of talking about possibility. Um, there's two things I find remarkable about that phrase. The first thing is this. Do you know when people first started saying it? 1962. Seven full years before we actually landed on the moon. The first reference came less than three months after John Glenn became the first American to orbit the Earth. His mission lasted all of three orbits, less than five hours. We still had no clue how to get there. And yeah, some people thought it was fluffy or, I don't know, made of cheese. We started saying that phrase so much throughout the 60s that by the time Neil and Buzz and Michael Collins were blasting off on the way to the moon, the phrase was already a cliche, and we hadn't even landed on the moon yet. I mean, there were articles written about how we need to stop saying that phrase. Um, I find that just really powerful. It was powerful because we were filled with enough collective grit and gumption to take it as a foregone conclusion that we could get there, that we could do it safely. Never mind the fact that it took over 400,000 people and nearly 3 billion hours of humanity's work to make it happen. We said we would do it. Of course we would make it happen. I think we can learn from that boldness and all the lessons we learned when we went the first time and all the lessons we, we will learn when we go back. Second thing I find remarkable about that phrase is this, it still retains its power even today. So powerful was that giant leap in technology and organization and logistics, communication and inspiration embedded itself into our imaginations. So here's what I wanna do. I want to bring this, this saying back, just with a few modifications this time. If we can land humans on the moon, why can't we dot, dot, dot? But let's go one step further. In fact, let's go one giant leap further. And let's look up at the moon and see it as something of a bat symbol, asking us if we can apply a little bit more grit, a little bit more gumption, if we can accept that Impossible just hasn't been redefined yet. And if we can dare to come up with new creative solutions to really, really hard problems. Going to the moon again can be a whole new engine of inspiration for us. After all, why do we do hard things? Because challenges sharpen our thinking. They drive us to innovate, they demand that we are better than we were yesterday. Because doing hard things inspires us to think bigger, to imagine greater possibilities. And you can't make anything new without first imagining it. Because the alternative is complacency. And nothing ever changed through complacency. So if we can somehow detect tiny ripples in the fabric of space-time from the collision of, of black holes millions of light years away. If we can build a telescope the size of the Earth to catch our first glimpse into the dark realm of infinity, if we can push our bodies to their absolute limits and cross our own finish lines wherever we find them, if we can begin to understand the most complex machine we've ever encountered, the human mind, and start to make connections between that machine and its mortal enemies? If we can be humble enough to seek new insights about ourselves, about the world, about the nature of really hard problems from the most unexpected of places, and if we can land the first woman and the first person of color on the moon, what else can we do?
anything. Thank you. I think.